Hello everybody, this is Budrich and in this video we start something new. Um, when I um, had published this, the, the last video about the sub keys, you know, the notification that displays the key bindings, I thought to myself, uh, I don't know, it feels like I'm running out of IDs, what am I gonna do next? <laughs> but this uh, notification thing, I don't even think it was part of this, my uh, recorded rise overdose where I showcased a bunch of, of, of uh, dirt tags I, I have uh, been working on, not really sharing with anyone. So let's just pick one of those and why not pick like the heaviest of them all, which is um, my wallpaper lock screen uh, uh, bloat. Uh, system, you know, load, whatever. Uh, you know what? I have prepared uh, Workspace 2 a bit for, for this. Um, so, where should we start? Let, let's just uh, do this. Check this out. I showed this in the video, you know. Uh, key binding, super shift W, uh, executes the command I3 locks wallpaper random here. And I get a random wallpaper. We can also see that uh, here I have some stuff is happening in this uh, directory here when I change wallpaper. Uh, and let's try to break this down uh, and see how what's going on, how it works, you know. I have this directory here, tmp slash wp. This is actually uh, home directory slash tmp slash wp. I, have, I, I removed the tilde and the home directory from whatever. It, it doesn't matter where this directory is located, but it's uh, it contains uh, three directories. Blurs, locks, walls. It also have uh, two symbolic links here, because these are actually symbolic links. I don't know if you can see, but they are links. Uh, one is called current lock, one is called current wall. Uh, and when I execute this uh, wallpaper random, it will take a random image from this directory, the walls directory, and uh, uh, use it as the wallpaper. All of the images here in the walls directory are uh, PNGs, and all of them have the exact same uh, dimensions as uh, my screen resolution, which is uh, 1920, 1080, right? Can we do this? Will I break stuff now? Yeah, 1920, 1080. Yeah, I probably broke something here now. Yeah, stupid. Stupid me. What I broke there was, I don't think the sub keys, I have to restart it there. Whatever. Sorry. <coughs> 19, 20, 10, 80. You know, that's a normal uh, resolution. Uh, I think it's the most common screen resolution, actually. So all wallpapers have the same dimension. And they all have a ping uh, format in this walls directory. And the nice thing by having it like that is that it's uh, really fast to change wallpaper. It never have to do any anything with the images. It doesn't have to stretch them or resize them or anything. They are already in in the same uh, that they already have the same dimension as the uh, screen. So that makes it very fast to to use them as a wallpaper. Uh, and I have uh, in in this system or what to call it my i3 locks thing here. It, it it will automatically resize any images that I add here to to the right dimension, and it, it will also convert it to ping. We get back to why I I do this. I I I know a thing about or two about image formats and things. So don't worry. Um, we also have the blurs directory here, which looks extremely similar to the walls directory. But this actually contains a, a blurred version of the same wallpaper. So I can hit another key binding, and here you can see the command is blur. And then it will instantly blur the, the wallpaper, the current wallpaper. And I can change wallpaper 
and blur it. Well, there it didn't work, of course, because sometimes it said uh, the blurs doesn't have to. They, they should. It should be the same uh, uh, content of blurs as it is in the walls directory, but sometimes. Uh, it needs to generate the blur image if it doesn't exist for, for one reason or another. Um, and then the blur command doesn't work immediately, but it, most of the time it does. And as you can see, that is also uh, an instant blur here, because the image already exists. I don't have to execute any weird blur commands or anything. All, all it does is, is just uh, uh, setting a wallpaper. To, uh, and the file names are exactly the same as they are in the walls directory. So, so how it works is, is, is like this. Every time I change wallpaper, I also update this uh, symbolic link here. Sorry, I have to... <laughs> I update this symbolic link and then in my i3 lock script uh, I, I just uh, uh, look at that link and see where it points to. If it points to an image in the walls directory and I want to blur it then I point to the same image in the blurs directory. If it if it links to an image here uh, I point it to a walls. <laughs> it's really simple. Um, and I blur the images with image magic. That's also what I use to, to convert them uh, and resize them and stuff. Uh, and right now I, I have just used a random option here, but I can also just take a, 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 a write the full absolute path to an image here. This is father of sin, cynicism here, for example. Let's do i3 locks wallpaper there is a short option i don't even remember what it is full path to an image that will set that as wallpaper but it's really fast since it already exists here it doesn't uh, uh, overwrite yeah wh when the image is from the walls directory it just set it to that but if the image is from outside the walls directory for example here this is a completely different directory Th this directory is not part of the system so to speak so if I would take this uh, good old uh, Windows XP uh, default wallpaper, you know, set that as the wallpaper. Takes a, takes longer time here now because it does uh, a couple of things. It both generates a new wall here. Uh, so as you can see, this is in JPEG, but it should exist here now uh, in in uh, as a ping with the same file name. Uh, 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 five, 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 it should be here somewhere. There it is. Same file name, except that it's in ping format. And I, I, I don't know what the original uh, dimensions was, but uh, it also resizes it to, to uh, uh, yeah, my screen resolution here. And now that exists here. Of course, this is a really inconvenient file name. Um, if we take this image, it uh, it also doesn't appear here. And another thing it did, by the way, wh when I generate a new image like this, when I add a new image to my library, so to speak, it also uh, generates the, the blur version for, for it when, when it's a new image. So it should exist here. Well, this isn't sorted in... Uh, whatever. There it is. There it is. Nice. Uh, so, so it exists both as a blurred and an and an unblurred version. But if I would rename uh, one of these wallpapers, let's call this one uh, um, uh, Neon Urmbunk. And set this as the wallpaper. Then it of course sets that as a wallpaper and generate the ping and everything. Uh, if I really want, if, if I know that I want this neon Urmbunk wallpaper, I can also, I don't have to, to specify the full path. I can, now that it is in my library, I can just write the name, the file name, neon Urmbunk. I don't even have to write ping or JPEG or anything just the name and it will set it now we couldn't see it of course because I'm stupid because it's already set 
uh, random, sorry. I change wallpaper and then set neon or bunk and it sets it immediately. Set to a random, 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 neon or bunk, bam. Hmm, it was a little bit slower there, I don't know, whatever. It's still uh, a fast, efficient, good system, I think, and, and being able to, to specify a specific wallpaper without uh, remembering, knowing the path or anything, just uh, then you can have like good names for your favorite wallpapers. Maybe make a little system to have different wallpapers for different workspaces or whatever, uh, and you can make a, a, a nice, easy command for it like this. Then we also have the locks directory, and in this one uh, we shouldn't have, here in blurs we probably have neon urmbunk there, I can blur this, you know, blur, 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 but it, it isn't uh, um, in this locks directory, because uh, this only adds images whenever I lock the screen with that image, it will generate a lock screen for it also. We could could do that here. So we change uh, instead of wallpaper, we just write lock. And there, this is the lock screen. It looks exactly the same. Uh, it's also ping image uh, with the same dimension. Only difference here is that uh, you see the clock in the bottom right corner. There's a, a, a gray uh, rectangle behind the clock. That is uh, the only thing that differs this image from, from the wallpaper image. That, that rectangle is actually embedded in the image. This is not from the lock screen or anything. Uh, so that's the only thing that differs the lock screen from, from the wallpaper. And when we lock there, you, you, you probably didn't uh, notice, but uh, before the clock showed up, uh, it, it, we first get a full screen version. Uh, I open SXIV full screen with the uh, with the wallpaper uh, Urmbunk here, and then if I need to, I generate the lock screen and then I lock lock the screen. So uh, if the lock screen image doesn't appear, it will still feel like we are locking the screen instantly. I I I, I like that. Um, And I have bound that to a key binding as well. And then lastly, we have, uh, yeah, maybe we can see now the Urmbunk, um, Urmbunk lock screen image. There it is. And here you can actually see in the thumbnail, right? There's a black box at the bottom right corner here. Then I have uh, the last thing is that I can also lock the screen uh, with a screensaver. And here, this that image didn't have a lock screen image, and it also uh, it takes a while for for X screensaver here to start. So that's uh, also why I display that full screen uh, fake uh, lock screen image before. Whatever, all of this uh, we will look into. It's also related to this, the DPMS settings and stuff. So the, there's a lot of things to cover here now in, in um, the, the upcoming videos. Um, but this is what we're gonna uh, work on for a while. And uh, I, don't, I don't really care about wallpapers at, at all, at all actually. I, uh, but I don't even set the wallpaper anymore in Xenit, so it's just a black black screen. I don't have an image at all, nothing. Uh, because I always have something else on my workspace, and since I'm using a tiling window manager, I never see my wallpaper. But that is not really the point. Uh, I do lock my screen though, and I, I also... I just like to, to have... to, to work... To, to do things with my wallpaper collection. It's, it, it, it's a nice thing. If you want to just work on a pro project of your own, create your own little script or program or whatever you want to call it. You know, a wallpaper collection is, is a great uh, little data set that you have. You can create your own, you could extend it, write a little database, maybe an SQLite 3 thing, just to test things out you have. 
the the point is that you have a data set it's in different dimensions maybe maybe uh, you could also categorize it if you wanted to and uh, there there's a lot of things to work with and and you will build something for yourself for your own collection whatever this could also be like a, a music collection, have, have a couple of different properties than a wallpaper collection or maybe a movie collection or something. Those kinds of things are excellent to, to get started uh, 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 programming. And it's a good thing if you want to learn a new language, for example, I would like to learn Python. Okay, uh, I will write a wallpaper manager in Python. That is my mission now. And then you have a good project, something something real, you know, that you will use. You don't have to publish it, but it you you have you have a data set that is not fake. It is your own wallpaper collection or music collection or whatever, and so on. And um, yeah, I I have been written uh, many many different uh, wallpaper solutions throughout the years, and uh, even when I was on Windows, I was doing similar things and stuff. So. This is just a good little practice project to, to have, or a pet project, or whatever. And right now it looks like this, with this setup, and I'm, I'm quite uh, happy with how, how this works. The biggest drawback is that uh, it, it takes up a lot of uh, 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 disk space. We can see here this WP directory, yeah, 670 megabytes just to store because I store three versions of each wallpaper and all of them are copies of uh, original files that live somewhere. Uh, part of, of, of this uh, uh, huge size is also that I convert some images like I convert this uh, this is a photo of, of uh, cheese balls you know. Um, if I make a wallpaper of that we, yeah maybe we can see here. Cheese balls and then take that i3 locks wallpaper cheese balls yeah and it took 2 seconds here to convert this because it converted it now to a to ping format you know um let's see cheese balls there they are Uh, I think we can even see it if we enable the status bar here. Yeah, there. Cheese balls. 1.4 megabytes. That's a ping. Status bar. Cheese balls. 166 kilobytes as a JPEG. Let that sink in for a moment. It it makes a big difference what kind of image image format you you, you use and uh, uh, the quality you have. So so a high quality ping. Converting a, a, a JPEG to a high quality ping, if it's a photo, it will occupy a lot more space. It's, it's really stupid to, to do this. The only reason I use ping all, all over here, I could of course fine tune this uh, a bit uh, and, and work around this, maybe I should. But the reason I do it in ping is because the lock screen, uh, when I lock the screen I use i3 lock, which is confusing since my own script is called i3 locks here, but whatever. And i3 lock, if you want to use images with that, it only accepts uh, ping images, It does, you, you cannot use JPEG images to lock your screen for some reason. So you need a ping image to, uh, for, for that. Um, the wallpaper I use, I don't even remember, I think I use h set root to set the wallpapers in the script, but that doesn't matter. You can set it with fe or, or probably sxiv also, and there are millions of programs to, to change the wallpaper. Uh, and I don't think there are many that cares if it's a JPEG or a ping. I think most of them can handle those common formats, but for some reason i3 lock cannot handle JPEG. Uh, and of course, I could have like the lock screens convert only the lock screens to 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 ping and but keep the original uh, file format for for the blurs and and the 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 wallpapers. And maybe I should take some time to that because that would reduce the size uh, uh, a lot. 
of my collection and this system but that the, uh, I'm, I'm aware of that and uh, that is the big, biggest drawback but even if I optimize the file formats and stuff this would just occupy a lot uh, it would occupy a triple space here com uh, compared to just having one version of them uh, unresized and stuff but then I would need to convert them resize them every time I change the wallpaper and you know even if you yeah, yeah, but I don't. I, I just set my wallpapers to stretch, you know, uh, to cover the screen. Yeah, but then there is somewhere in the CPU computer magic things, you know, it does some resizing uh, and image processing of it to stretch it or or resize it or or tile it or whatever it is. If you already have done that and save the result in a file, that's much faster, less processing, but more disk space. That's the drawback, um, but I can afford a couple of hundred megabytes disk space uh, because I am Swedish. Thank you for watching this. Uh, I hope uh, you will uh, keep 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 an eye on this uh, video upcoming video series here. We we'll start right away. I upload the next video tomorrow probably. Uh, when we start uh, writing the i3 locks script we, we we build a new one from scratch and take one step at a time uh, it is not that complicated we of course use uh, external programs like image magic and, and i3 lock and, and things like that but i think th th this is an interesting project uh, and i hope uh, i i can inspire you uh, in one way or another you don't have to to just uh, use exactly this same thing and maybe uh, in, in in this series we, we do it the right way and and uh, 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 take the fi file extensions into consideration not creating unnecessary bloat like like we could see there and as you could see it was like 10 times larger uh, just that that uh, uh, example I, I hadn't looked at this before I just knew this will be bigger but this on the other hand uh, not sure if, if the difference is as big here this is all this looks almost more suitable as a ping image than a jpeg image if you ask me you no know? yeah it's 3.9 megabyte as a jpeg here but this photo is just 166 kilobytes uh, and here as a ping it's 1.2 megabytes and here it was 3.9 so some images are more suitable f as a ping and here the original one was JPEG and, and you know when it's like that, that is almost the... Then we more or less have to generate both of them, compare them and see which one is, is the best one. That, that would just be weird. But um, choosing between ping and JPEG makes a difference. They are, they are completely different image formats. And JPEG is far from it is not dead. It, it it is it is a good format when used in the right context. And ping is a great format when when used in the right format. And I I, I would also argue that GIF is, is uh, completely acceptable when used uh, in the right context. Whatever. Thank you for watching. Have a great day.